Hey everybody, welcome to the Tokyo Regional Immigration Services Bureau. It's a, a typhoon that didn't come through here. I thought that this would be a pretty good day, the day after, to come and, and renew a visa. And it doesn't matter how long you've been staying in Japan, you have to renew a visa or you have to renew a uh, residency every now and then, and this is my time. Uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the procedures and some of the enhanced procedures they have due to the pandemic that's going on. How you doing, everybody? Um, you can see here, there's a sign. Here, there's enhanced screenings being conducted. So they are checking your bags and everything like that here. And uh, when you before you go in there, they are taking your temperature. They are taking your temperature and doing uh, body screenings. Men go to the uh, left, women go to the right. I think it's important for you to kind of understand the procedure here because it was really hard for me when I got here to figure out what was going on. Um, the first thing you do when you get off the bus here, you have to take a number right here. And uh, they have a, a, book of, a, a book of numbers here that you would take that's in the thumbnail here. She has it in Japanese, but it's not in English here. So, so go and take the ticket over there. Yeah. So this is the entrance to where you would go. After you take a ticket, you'll have to wait in line for your groups. This is group A for 11.15. And you can come to your line 15 minutes in advance. I've never done this before. This is the first year. After all the years I've, I've had to come here to renew a visa, this is the first time. It goes all the way around the corner here. There's a staff, but they don't really know too much. A lot of them are like part-time workers. Um, social distancing is sort of weird here. Nobody's really social distancing. Uh, I noticed in the morning, there's a lot of people here. Uh, in the afternoon around 11, there's not a lot of people here. It was a lot worse around eight in the morning. And it took me uh, two and a half hours to get through to submit my application. And I'll come to pick that up later. Here's the entrance uh, for B for 11.15. And if you were to come now, your ticket probably say afternoon. And you can see people are waiting pretty good in the groups here. And there's a group C down there. I'll take you to the group C area and then we'll walk around. People are from all over the world here waiting to renew their visas or pick it up or ask questions. Whatever the, whatever the reason that you need to get into immigrations, you need to wait in line in order to get in due to the enhanced security procedures. And I'll explain that more in a second. Let, let me just walk through here. Here's group C for 1115, very interesting. And then she's holding a, a sign that says Seigel, meaning the end of the line. It's very much like, and there's the Fuji TV building in Odaiba back there. It's very much like uh, Disneyland, except this is not Disneyland. This is the Immigration Bureau. <laughs> oh, I don't like coming here every year. If you look at the Google reviews, the Immigration Department does not get very high reviews. Um, it's a shame. They are really uh, professional, but not a lot of the people will speak English here. And that sets up a lot of confusion for people who speak no Japanese. People who don't speak any Japanese and all get kind of angry and say, you're supposed to be dealing with foreigners. Why don't you speak any English at all? And this is still Japan after all. So I think if you go to the US, not a lot of people will be speaking foreign languages either. But in general though, people can speak a little bit of English, but it's very good for you to learn a little bit of uh, essential words that you'll need, like address, name, age, things like this. Very important for you to fill out your forms. And if you forget something, they're probably gonna ask you that question. Tanjobi, birthday, things like this. Uh, the building itself looks very much like a prison. It's a complex, I guess you would say. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, I'll be, I won't be able to, I won't need to come here for a very long time. 
All right, after you get in, let me go through this procedure because I really hope that this live stream offers a lot of value to people who are coming here. Or if you are thinking of moving here to Japan, these are the procedures that you'll have to go to for Tokyo. Tokyo is special because it's so crowded. The immigration and visa renewal is, is very, very different. That's the Rainbow Bridge over there. On a day where the typhoon just didn't seem to really come. Typhoon Dolphin, I think it was called. So I got off and I had to wait for 45 minutes before I could uh, get in. I got here at uh, 8.40 and they, they gave me a ticket for 9.45. So they gave me a ticket for 9.45. So I, I had to wait for about 45 minutes, but you can get in line at 9.30. So you can get in line 15 minutes before your entry time. So people lined up pretty good. There was some confusion for those who didn't speak any Japanese at all. If you tried to ask the staff, a lot of them are part-time workers. They don't know how to answer you because they're, they're not really English speakers. That's not one of the requirements to work at immigrations, to speak English. You just have to be able to be patient and like, they'll understand like, Jugo hungo modote kurasai. Please return in 15 minutes. Usually, there are other foreigners who can speak Japanese and we help those who cannot speak in English or in Japanese. So I was, I was helping the staff kind of figure out, there's nobody around here. So I was helping the staff kind of help the other people with figuring out what to do. And the system is kind of new and chaotic. It seems like they don't work here quite often so they're not sure what's going on, sort of, or they're not, I don't think that they're actually immigration staff working on the outside. On the inside, once you get inside, um, things work pretty standard. Meaning, first you have an application. You can download your application off of the internet. I highly recommend you do this. You need a photograph and it has to be a new photo because I once used the same photo and they called me back and told me that I had to submit a new photo and it took another month for my application to go through. Don't use the same photo or an old photo. Take a new photo. That was my fault. Um, all right, so I, I went in there and they check your application. Um, I, I have my tax certificates. I have uh, all the forms that I need. It was filled in there. Um, but I downloaded the wrong application, so they gave me two ne new sheets, and I was like, oh, okay. So I had to fill them in by hand. Um, they give you a city can or a number. And I was number 187. When I got there, they were on number 110. So I had to wait about 30 minutes inside there. They called my number, I went in there, and the lady uh, asked me to remove my, my mask, looks at me, confirms my passport, uh, takes my application, checks it over to make sure everything is filled in. Uh, she said, okay, please wait until your number's called over at booth number six. And booth number six is where you go to pick up your passport and your residence card, and then you're out of there. So you've submitted your, res uh, you submitted your application. It took me two and a half hours. It's like standard. I talk with some other people here, two and a half hours. So even if you come in the morning, be prepared for two, two, two and a half hours, two and a half hours. It's not too bad, it's not too bad. It's just part of it. Jeff Roberts, buy yourself a crutch. Jeff, I'm gonna need it. My, my leg is, is doing okay. It's been a tough, tough week not being able to get around, but I came here by bicycle as long as I'm riding the bicycle, my leg doesn't hurt too bad, so I can get around. Bradshaw Studio, hello. How you doing? It's always nice to see Bradshaw Studio. Robin Smith, get something to calm yourself after the experience of waiting in, in interminable lines. Coffee. I need a coffee. Mission success, get a beer. <laughs> Mr. Daz, uh, we love you. Never mind that it's still like, you know, 11 a.m. That's close enough, right? Um, there are some, let me get my mask back on. We're going back around to the, to the entrance. This is Shinagawa. Now, I heard that you could go to Tachikawa to get your uh, immigrations, uh, your visa renewed as well. A visa renewal is very different than um, a visa, getting a visa initially. A renewal is sort of just an extension. The main thing that they wanna know is that you have a financial support for yourself. You're making enough money and they need proof of that, whether that's contracts, um, your tax forms from the Kuyakusho or the city hall or the town hall, wherever you are, if you're in the regional areas, if you're in a, the countryside, 
Uh, it'll be your, your town hall, not your ward. I get mine from the, the ward inside of Tokyo, which is Chuo Ward, Chuoku. Shinagawa is out here by the seaside, so you have a lot more open space here. There's a Lawson's over here and there's a Lawson's across the street. I gotta tell you, if you do come here, be prepared to wait, but Lawson's over there, no social distancing whatsoever. People are really crammed in there. It was kind of disgusting. The inside of the immigration department is kind of disgusting. I don't think they clean it, don't touch anything, bring your own pens. I'm just being honest here. I'm being honest. Don't touch the walls. Don't touch the counters as little as possible. You'll be fine. It's, un it's unusual for Japan for it not to be as clean as it normally is. But I, I don't know. It's immigrations. It's all these cultures mushing together. It's, it turns into be an omelet, I guess. Um, after about two, three weeks, are right, walking towards the uh, immigration zone. After about two, three weeks, we're going to, uh, I'm going to get a form in the mail. Now you have to give a postcard. I always get stickers, uh, seals that I use for my postcard club. I stick the seal on the postcard. So if it's uh, printed out, it, there's never a mistake. It arrives to me probably in less than a month. Then after, after about a month, I get the card. I bring the card and my passport and my residence card. I come to pick it up. And then, uh, boom, there you go. I'm renewed. Sometimes if they have a problem, they'll send you a message to come in and you have to answer it. They also have a telephone number. Not very helpful. I've called them and asked. Yeah, Best to come in person, talk with them. But in general, renewing a visa in Japan, that's my, that's my bicycle. Renewing a visa in Japan is not too painful, but it just takes time and uh, you can make new friends, I guess. It depends if you like talking with people, but in the pandemic, I, I'm not, I told Kanai I'm not going to talk to too many people, but I always talk to people. It's just sort of what I do. You know what I mean? Alma Cordero, thank you. Cordero, thank you. Pearman's pretty cool. John Kimura. Yes, I am rocking the hat. They made me take off my mask, but not my hat. Confirm who I am. Archong89, get yourself a nice cup of coffee. You guys are really taking care of me. That's nice. That's really nice. Gotta go get that beer. I know I owe Mr. Doss a couple of beers. I hear you over there. Um, I want to take... Hey, Michael Sassano. I know it's early. Here's an ice cold super Ozahi dry. I know it's so early. I was going to do a live stream tonight and there's a midnight snack run imminent coming in. Uh, it just depends on the weather. Again, the typhoon was supposed to come in. You can look at the sky right now. Very low clouds, rainy, not that much wind. And I was surprised it did hit us the same way that I thought it was going to. Um, right now, I'm getting closer to the entrance. This is the entrance to the immigration's office and it looks a lot different from a bra from a, a couple of steps away for me i still i kind of reminds me of a prison very institutional i don't know i'm sure you all have your own opinions uh, the people who work here they're they're very nice they'll be patient with you if you're patient with them if you get angry you know i think these procedures are so harsh here comes a bus that just arrived from shinagawa station uh, the bus is 210 yen. It's good to have a Suica or an IC card so you don't have to pay the guy and then that takes time. You pay when you get on, not when you get off with Tokyo buses. And there you go. It's going back. It, it, it pretty much ends here, goes down the street and runs back to Shinagawa Station. You can walk to the Tokyo Immigration. You can walk here. It, from Shinagawa Station, it takes about 30, 35 minutes. If you run a little, maybe 25 minutes. I've used, I ran a little couple of times, but you can see the lines here and they make it, they have a place where you can sit out of the rain, which is nice, but not a lot of social distancing here, you know? Not a lot of social distancing. It's kind of, I was slightly scared. I do have a face shield, but I didn't wear it. Nobody's got face shields. 
um, at this time, uh, right before lunchtime, by the way, just a little note, they're, they're bureaucrats, so between 12 and 1, I think everything shuts down for lunch. So <laughs> if you come, this is a reason why you want to come in the morning to get this process over with. But this is the entrance uh, to there. In order to get in there, you got to get a, a ticket. They're not letting anybody in there. You can see Family Mart right there. You can get revenue stamps. All right, when I do come back here, this is the last thing. I, this isn't going to be a really long, uh, super long live stream. When I come back here, I can go across the street here. When I come back here, I got to get a stamp, a 4,000 yen or about $40 stamp. And I have to lick it and put it, well, maybe not lick it in the pandemic. You can wet it and put it on the little form. And this means that you paid your renewal tax. And uh, you can get those stamps at the Family Mart as well as make copies, get a drink or something. It just depends here. Tokyo Immigration Bureau. You can always tell people who are not from around these, these parts. Coming across the street here, I think. This is the Lawson's I was telling you about earlier. Uh, just over there. And I can't get a good picture there, but it's really, really crowded. There's a truck in the way. Hey, Chris Rancy, Chris is here. What do you think? What do you think might be the mix of nationalities? I don't know, but there's a lot of people from Korea and China and regional areas. Um, a lot of people from India and Pakistan I saw. Uh, one person from Nepal. You can see from the passports and you can kind of tell by the seal on it. You don't even have to look at the look at the name if you, after a while. A lot of people from China and from Korea, of course. And uh, um, I saw some people from Africa, which is kind of neat. Uh, there's the Lawson's over there that's completely packed. People are outside. Uh, it's I wouldn't go there. You can't pay me to go there. Sorry, Mr. Das, I'm not getting my beer there. <laughs> I'm just not gonna do it. I refuse. All right, I wanna take some questions now. I'm kind of in a safe zone. Background is the Immigration Bureau. I wanna take some questions now, anything that might help you. Um, how many years can you live in Japan before renewing a visa? Great question, David. Visas come in three flavors. There's one year, three year, and five year. I used to get three year visas, then about, I don't know, 10 years ago, I started getting one year visas, and I don't know why. I think it's because I, I, I'm an entrepreneur. I don't work for any corporation, freelance maybe, I don't know. The, in Japan, um, kaishain or workers for big corporations seems like a safer job, so they often will give longer visas for those people. I don't know why, but I've been getting one year visas, so hopefully they can stop doing that. I don't want to come here ever really yeah what happens if you go to the office in Tachikawa um, even if you have a PR you have to you have to come here at least every five years I believe to renew your your uh, uh, PR your age again you can I believe you can go to the one in Tachikawa I don't think they'll turn you away um, you but it's quite far for me so for me to go to Tachikawa and back I can't go on my bicycle and the other, other reason why I don't get a Tachikawa is it actually takes me like an hour and a half to get the Tachikawa and an hour and a half to get back. So, and I have to wait there for about 30 minutes. So it'd take me about five hours to do that. Where I could just ride my bicycle here and wait for two and a half hours, see what I mean? But if you go to Tachikawa, outside of Shinagawa, I don't know what it's like in Osaka, we gotta ask Kevin. But in, in Tokyo, Shinagawa is not, it's not a great place to be. This is where there's like a deportation center up there. There's a lot of strange things going in there that I don't want to know about. Yeah. Good question. So uh, I, I think you get one, one, it's supposed to be like this, one year, one year, three year, three year, five year. That's supposed to be the way you get your visas. I don't know how I mean one years, but I don't, I don't question it. I just nod my head and get out and move on with my day. And I got to come back here and make another report from <laughs> from this area what's the average flying speed of a migrating sparrow um, 23 meters per second I don't know are 
there aliens like E.T. in there. Trevor, I actually got my first... I actually got my first uh, a residence card in 1998, and it said uh, alien on it. It was pretty cool. It also had my... There's a Shinkansen going by there. It also had my thumbprint on it, so it was sort of like a sort of criminal criminally like I did something wrong so they got rid of the thumbprint but it had a thumbprint on the ID card for being a resident of Japan if you weren't from Japan that was pretty weird but I thought it was kind of cool at the same time because you know like you know bad uh, bad to the bone you know like like rebellious I got a thumbprint man look at this it looked kind of cool and then on the top it said uh, alien resident alien resident I, I look people some people get offended I like it because it's so it's so bizarrely cool in a way uh, do they check credit history now nah. they check again the most important criteria is number one you make it okay there's there's two more in, important criteria for renewing a visa um, number one you have to be making enough money to support yourself and as you get older your income should be rising so I guess somebody who's in their 20s could probably make it by on 200. 200,000 to 250,000 yen a month. As you get older, they expect you to make more money. So if you're still making 250,000 yen per month, they're gonna be a little skeptical if you're in your 50s. Like, you probably will get through, but it's not as easy. Like, you're 50, you should be making 5 million yen a month, a year or something, right? Or 10 million yen a year. So there are sort of, like, expectations. And the amount of money that you, you make also means that's the amount of money that you pay in taxes and there's a very they, they very much want to make sure that you pay your taxes so you need to have proof so i have to go to city hall and get certificates and documents telling uh telling them that i have paid confirming i don't think that they can call directly to confirm with the tax office you need to bring those papers with you i think the powers that they have to confirm are very limited however they have i have heard that they have called employers of people who have filled out their applications somewhat wrongly or have questions, questionable documents, they will call and confirm employers. So that does happen. But it, especially if you're doing a PR or age again, which is permanent residency, there are advantages to get a permanent residency and there's some disadvantages to getting permanent residencies, okay? Yeah. Uh, can you get Japanese citizens since you're married to Kanai? It doesn't quite work like that. Not like America has probably the easiest system for becoming a citizen. You just have to be born there. In Japan, it's not quite like that. Um, I could get Japanese citizenship, and I have some friends that have renounced their citizenship of their nationality, their country, and taken on Japanese citizenship, uh, mostly for tax purposes. But I'm not really considering that. I'm, I'm proud of who I am and where I'm from, and I don't really need to do that. But, you know, it's always always possible but it's it's really hard to to do that i think you i don't know i have a couple of friends as i said a couple of friends who did it and it's very a um, lot of questions interviews and things like this it's not it's not a slam dunk to get it it's kind of you really have to yeah proud yeah you really have to um go through some hurdles everything in japan you have to jump through hoops to get does it cost to get a visa in japan um well in order to get a visa in Japan, you need what's called a certificate, a work visa. If you get a visa on arrival, you don't need to, you just have to bring your passport. That's different. This is the immigration bureau in Tokyo where you go to extend anything um, in central Tokyo. Uh, you, if you just come in with a visa, if you're from a certain country, you got to go to the embassy and a pass. There's those kind of visas. I'm talking about a work visa that allows you to work in Japan. You need what's called a COE or a certificate of eligibility. And this is the issued by your employer your employer will come here or come to a regional immigration office to get this and register you for a coe they'll send that coe to you or fax it they still have faxes and then you take that to the the japanese embassy in your country whether it's new york or the consulate in chicago or los angeles and then they will issue you a visa based on this coe and your application form okay Without a COE, you don't get a chance to work here. Um, it's not that hard to get a COE, but your employer has to, um, basically, the whole thing with working in Japan is, you have to be able to make enough money to support yourself, and they don't want you to drag on their social systems. No country wants you to drag on their social systems. It doesn't make any sense. 
So they just want to make sure that you, everything checks out, and that's sort of the, the process. So again, like to go back, you have to have um, to renew your visa, and you can do this without having an employer. You can do this as a freelancer. You have to, but if you do as a freelancer, you have to be in the category that your visa was issued, which is for an English teacher, the categories of uh, humanities and international services, which seems so broad. If you're an engineer, if you're an engineer, you have to be in the engineers department if you leave your company. So you can leave your company and you can renew your visa without staying with the same company. However, with that said, you have to be in that same category, meaning international services is sort of what I do. So an English teacher can go ahead and become a YouTuber. The, the thing is though, if you do want to get a visa as a YouTuber on your own, you have to uh, show that you can make, uh, you have to show that you, you make enough money to them. You have to show contracts, you have to show um, tax documents, and you have to show um, you know as much proof as possible that's in the forms that they accept. And basically, they tell you what they want, you go and get it from the offices, you put it in a little envelope, you give it to them. It's pretty easy, all right? But you need to get, you need to get, uh, you need to understand that, right? Um, would a spousal visa be easier? Sure, but spousal visas also are one year renewal, two year renewal, uh, three year renewal, five year renewal. They come in different flavors as well. And spousal visas are also uh, require you to get a, um, uh, you have to get a letter of guarantee from your wife or your wife's family. You have to get a, uh, uh, her, uh, Koji, oh, Kojiki, I forget, uh, the family history from the, her family history with you on the register. You have to go and get a ton of documents in order. And each time you have to renew with a marital visa, a spousal visa, you got to bring the same stuff, including pictures of you and your wife. And you better bring happy pictures, okay? And it helps also if you come and dress, dress sort of, don't come here in, in like a ripped t-shirt and says, you know, you know, like try to come here with some, somewhat presentable. I'm wearing a collared shirt. I got a jacket on because it's not the, the best weather. But, you know, if you come here with a suit and a tie, if you come here with your spouse, it doesn't hurt. In Japan, they, they, they have a criteria and everything is laid out very easy for you to understand. But the thing is, like in Japan, we're always observing and looking at the details. You don't know what people are thinking. Like, I'm looking at your sake glass and filling it. That applies not just to sake. That applies to pretty much everything. People are observing and thinking and judging you. So, you want to have, you want to look good and presentable, especially if it's your first time and not think, oh, this is my right to get a visa renewal. No, they can tell you no and not give you a reason. And then you'll just be, what is it, up the creek? Is that the expression here? Um, Urze is here. John, I hope you have a quick recovery. Thank you. Just be curious if I ever look for a job there. How good of a chance uh, I have with a technical degree? Um, try not to hurt your leg. <laughs> for this, understand, I, I hurt my leg pretty badly uh, the other day. Last week with Greg in the onsen. All right, answer. Um, I don't know. Pretty much bachelor bachelor's degrees are the minimum here for most things, but technical degrees, I don't I don't really know. If you ha the thing is this, um, if you have an employer in Japan that will hire you and will give you a COE, you just need the COE, then you can be hired and get the visa for work at the embassy in your category that your employer has applied for you for. A work holiday visa is completely different. I think you have until the age of 30. Uh, but renewing that after that's pretty hard. Then you have to find an employer. Um, I think that's a great question. Jeff Ang, uh, here's something for lunch. I'm going to pick something up for Kanai on, um, on the way home. Maybe something from the bakery. Shane's here. Oh, Shane. No. No, Irvon. You're matching Shane. You too. Crazy. Didn't do anything except renew my visa. I didn't even do it yet because I got to pick it up later. If you have kids, would they need visas too? I believe so, not unless they're born in Japan and from a Japanese, if, I, that's a good question. I don't think my friend's children, um, if they're born here in Japan, need a visa, but they get, they get a passport for Japan if they register. And I guess they can get dual citizenship until 18 and then you have to pick one. 
Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, I don't have any kids yet. 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 It's parentheses. Yet. Irvan doesn't have a question. <laughs> uh, uh, air to the run. Get some uh, salumpas for the knee. I'm not sure what that is. Salumpas. Is that beer at the saloon? Will that help the knee? Mm. Um, all right. One more question here. These are all really... I think really important for you, especially if you're coming. Uh, I've met, I've met some people who watch only in Japan too, and they always go, "I know you." I'm like, "I don't know you," and that's kind of always a funny moment. Like, I know you from somewhere. I'm like, "Yeah, maybe." I don't know. I don't tell. I don't ever help people out. I feel that that feels like, you know, I don't know. It is kind of neat. Saloon pass. Okay. Uh, the one that you put in your body when you're in pain. Sarumpas. I, I don't know. I need to look, when it comes to medicine, I don't like to go to the hospital and I don't like to take any kind of medication either. I will avoid the hospital at all costs and Kanai makes me go. I don't even know the name of this. Uh, uh, I thought it was uh, Kampa, but, which is like, a, like one of these meetings where people go, but it's uh, Kampo, which is this pow Chinese medicine powder that I'm taking to help reduce with the swelling. How do we get on this? We're supposed to be on immigration, customs and immigration. A uh, tor toro porco, my contribution to help keep John in Japan. <laughs> I'm doing just fine, brother. A retiring in Japan. That's a good question that I've gotten several times. Um, you can get what's called an investor's visa, and I think just being a tourist, you can't buy property. It's a tough one. You have to have somebody guaranteeing you. There's a visa that you can get if you want to invest in Japan called an investor's visa. You have to hire two workers. Uh, some people just footy call me the money and the money comes back to them and they get they let them keep, uh, they hire like family members and stuff. I've, I've seen ways around it. I don't recommend that you, you, you try to break the rules, but there are sort of ways around everything because the way things are written. You got to find those loopholes and, and talk to people about them. I'm not going to tell you that much. So um, retiring here in Japan, I've met some people but they're usually married to someone Japanese or they bought their property um, as a result of like a, another company or a partnership or they paid somebody to get that property and legally the documents you really have to check them over to make sure uh, that you legally I'm gonna walk over to my bicycle because I think we're, we're pretty much done here this is the bus to go back it's on the other side of the road back to Shinagawa station uh, we're walking back to the back to my bicycle past the uh, immigrations. So you really have to check out the paperwork. Make sure you get a lawyer to do that too. And if you can, if you're paying the money, get them to do an English translation and get an English translation of the document and also get that signed as well. So there's no like if if the that way that the translation is on on par and they also have to get the translation translated or translate their document to make sure that everything is is good um but if somebody's buying you a significant piece of property in their name you're going to want to have that contract very very clear you know what i mean here's the entrance to the immigration she's still holding the tickets so that's about it from tokyo um yeah definitely and a lot of people have had to had to renew their visas um, as travelers because of COVID, their flights were canceled. And if your flight was canceled and you want to renew your visa here, you can do that, but you have to bring proof of cancellation. Uh, there are some documents here. This is the entrance of it. There's some documents asking for the proof of cancellation. I hope this was useful. There's a lot of, a lot of people have questions. Brenda, oh, I love you, Brenda, here. Buy something for Kanai, take care. Thank you, Brenda. Yeah, there's supposed to be a typhoon here, but um, it's just kind of a little bit of rain and some wind. It's not too bad. I get a ride back about 20 minutes. Um, I wish I could take the Shinkansen. There goes the Shinkansen, but it doesn't stop at immigrations. I wonder why. Kind of just rolls by. 
Pretty wimpy, Ronald. Yeah, indeed. It's pretty wimpy. Um, if you if you had renewed your visa here in Japan, you can leave me, leave us a comment. Tell us about your experience at the Shinagawa Immigration Department. <laughs> oh, Irvon, I am. I think I'm gonna get that. Uh, I think I will get the GM, GM uh, 12 to 24 f 2.8. I was looking at that. I think it's a go. I think that's gonna be a really useful lens um, for ramen shops and and things like that. So. I think we're in for that. Yeah, leave me a comment below about your experience going to um, Tokyo Immigrations, if you had a, a good experience or a bad experience. Um, what were the what was the bad experience and, and uh, you know speed maybe they're gonna watch this and some of the feedback can be helpful for them. I think it's really important. Uh, and I, I do believe that they do look at social media because the Google reviews of Tokyo Immigrations, not, not, not pretty. It's kind of funny, actually, some of the people write in. <laughs> like their experiences were not good. I'm, I've never had a bad experience. It's just sometimes frustrating. And you can control your emotions and say, that's just the way it is. And, and arguing in Japan, in Japan never really helps. The best thing you can do is to stay calm. You can ask questions. Um, if it's a busy place, get away from that person. Ask somebody at the at the counter for help or ask for the manager and then come to them and then calmly ask and write it down what you want. And if you can't speak Japanese, then get somebody who can to help you out. Getting angry never ever helped anything in Japan. And I'm telling you that from 23 years experience, Smile, stay calm. Being emotional doesn't help the situation. Being calm absolutely does. And they believe you a lot more if you're not freaking out. Like I was wondering why they gave me one year last year. I didn't freak out. I took it like a man, came back the next year through COVID. But I think that the procedures that they have in place is not enough and it's a mess, but it works. You get through, I'm, I'm done, all right? So I hope you have a great day. Leave me comments below. Hit the like button if you want me to do another live stream today. <laughs> I'll check back and see if we get a thousand likes or something. We'll go back and check it out again. Um, hey, Matt. Matt Engstrom. Uh, hi, John. I hope you and Kanai uh, come to California. We were going to go to California in March. We were going to do rent a car and do an entire um, West Coast down to uh, Arizona and then, and then leave. But guess what happened? So we're stuck, we, we couldn't make it. I was still dying for an In-N-Out burger and I don't even know why. Everyone just says that it's, it's that good. But yeah, Peter, Peter lives, his family's up in Oregon, so it would be nice. Can you make it happen soon? We will try, we will try. We will see. Um, I don't know, but Peter, if Peter's up in Oregon and, and we happen to be going back on the same flight to the West Coast, that'd be pretty neat. Pretty neat to, to uh, drive around and, and check out the area. And, and of course, he's a West Coast guy and I'm an East Coast guy. So, never know. Do you want to come to Michigan? Yeah, no, thank you. I'll just, I'll stay at the border in Toledo, Ohio. I went to a school in Ohio State. We don't like Michigan. I've been to, yeah, look, all right. I've been to Michigan um, three times, to, two times, two or three times to watch Ohio State Michigan game. Those are the only times I went to Michigan. I think we lost one and we won one. Yeah, we lost one and won one. 95 was a hard loss, man. Eddie George we had that year. Heisman Trophy winner. We lost. We was going to go to the national champions undefeated. Michigan beat us. I, I don't think I've been across the border since then. Stick, I'll stick to Toledo. <laughs> That's the border. It's border war. All right, there you go, everybody. Uh, stay, stay safe wherever you are in the world. And I do, Astro Boy, I saw that. I'll be coming to Oz sometime soon with Kanai. Stay safe, everybody. And uh, yeah, I'll be back again later on. <laughs>